What's up, sons? It's Blind Ride with Sound Attack once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at the mining performance for the GTX 1066 gigabyte in 2021. But before we get into it, here's a word from our sponsor. Today's sponsor is myself. To support the channel, click the join button down below and you will be able to access our privately hosted Rocket Chat. Selecting the $1.99 option will get you access and after that you just need to head on over to the membership tab, scroll down and expand out your membership perks and find the section for connecting on social media. In that section there will be a secret registration URL for Rocket Chat where you can sign up and enjoy talking with other cryptocurrency enthusiasts and miners without scammers, spammers, or bots. Welcome back. If you guys would like to sponsor the channel, hit the about tab and shoot me an email. We are also looking for editors right now, so definitely hit me up if you're interested in cryptocurrency and have video editing experience. That is a paid job, so you can go over and hit the email for that. Finally, the last announcement is going to be that we are accepting Bitcoin donations to buy a Tesla. <laughs> All right, the last one was a joke, but we are trying to do that because that would make it for a fun video, right? I got to save up quite a bit more. I don't know, like 30,000 more, but it's fine. All right, so the GTX 1066 gigabyte you guys should be familiar with. You got an eight pin PCIe power adapter. You got six gigabytes of GDDR5 and your core is based on the Pascal architecture, which is quite old. Yes, we are getting re-releases of these as mining only GPUs. So being aware of what their mining performance is and what you should pay for them is going to be super important. They are probably lower on the totem pole now than they used to be because of the change to Kapow for Ravencoin and so that really made the RX 580s viable on Ravencoin. However, you can mine Conflux with them as well, which we'll be talking about and of course Ethereum and we'll go over that profitability right now. So first things first, let's talk about Conflux. Conflux is 6.2 mega hash a second at 144 watts. That is once we overclock the core by 200 megahertz. Now, turning down the power consumption is going to significantly decrease the hash rate. You can tune it down to about 4.9 to 5 mega hash a second at under 100 watts, but you are also just giving up that hash rate. Obviously, Pascal is not as good at mining Conflux as Turing, right? So you really want to be looking at the RTX series line for Conflux and unfortunately the 10 series cards are just not going to perform that well. The GTX 1060 6 gig after power only makes about 23 cents a day on Conflux. The story changes though when we start talking about Kapow, and that is Ravencoin. On Ravencoin, the GTX 1066 gig gets 11 mega hash a second at 117 watts. The particular overclock that we went for on this one was basically the same as Ethereum, so plus 400 megahertz on the memory. However, the only difference between this and Ethereum is that we cranked down the power consumption only to about 80%. Now that nets us about $1.14 a day after power if we're at 10 cents a kilowatt hour. Always make sure you go to what to mine and plug it in for the current day, all that sort of thing. So it is viable to be mining Ravencoin on these and possibly one of the better options as we get closer and closer to the EIP-1559 implementation with London, but we'll just have to see how that shakes out. Finally, we have Ethereum, the big daddy. Everybody's pretty familiar with this. Tuning these in has been pretty much set in stone for quite some time on Ethereum. You can get anywhere from 23 to 25 mega hash a second at about 90 watts. Now we are struggling to maintain our memory overclocks above 400 megahertz or above plus 400 megahertz. And that is because we need to do a refurb on this card. So if you're interested in the refurb how to, that will be coming soon. Hit the notification bell for that. So at 23 mega hash a second at 90 watts, which is probably what you would expect if you're gonna buy a used GTX 1066 gig and you're not going to refurb it, 
you're going to get about $1.67 a day after power. So not too shabby. This is still a relevant GPU for mining. At the end of the day, if you guys can pick these up for a decent price, they will mine, they will hash, and they will be profitable. However, because of the current GPU market, I've noticed that they are around four to $600 a pop, which is absolutely insane. At those prices, you know, you aren't gonna be able to get a decent ROI on this at this time. Even if you're doing Ethereum and Ethereum price goes up and you're closer to like $2 a day, you're still looking at 200 to 300 day ROI. And with the implementation of EIP 1559, you don't know exactly where that's gonna shake out to. Of course, Ravencoin could be the savior there, but like we've talked about before, it just depends on how much that network can handle when people move over to it. And then on top of that, the other thing that you gotta be concerned about is where is Ravencoin going? Can Ravencoin actually survive another dip in the market? Are they going to be able to be competitive in NFTs or DeFi or something along those lines? Is their development going to start moving forward at a rate that will compensate for the amount of miners moving onto the network? These are all questions we have. So if you're only looking at mining Ethereum, you really don't want to be paying more than $200 a pop for the GTX 1066 gigabyte and that is US dollars. But if you have one and you need some overclocks, hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, make sure you leave a like. I will see you next Tuesday. If you enjoyed this content, you can check out more crypto content on this playlist up here, or of course, go ahead and subscribe for more in the future. Adios.